In the early 2000s, you used to see this console a lot in shopping malls and flea markets. They supposedly contained thousands of games all in one unit, but that was never actually the case. Everyone knew these consoles were bootlegs and very poor quality, but people still bought them. What ended up happening to these? The answer will surprise you. Let's take a look. What's going on? It's Poger coming at you with another video. Alright, if you've seen a few of my videos and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button right there. That way, you'll be notified whenever I make a new video. I'm trying to get the 20k subscribers by the end of the year, only you can help me get there. And we do have a Discord server, just go to discord.poger.net, I'll also put a link right in the description. Alright, we're going to take a look at the Superjoy 3. In the late 90s, bootleg Famiclones started becoming more popular. These were typically a controller with an NES stuffed inside. They all had the same things in common. They contained a ton of games that were stolen, the quality of the controllers were very poor, and they would break very easily. The game list was usually unrealistically high, like 10,000 games or 5,000 games, but they were all repeats. One of the most well-known bootleg Famiclones was the Superjoy 3. You would see these at shopping malls and flea markets because they couldn't sell these in stores. The box has all kinds of issues. It seems like they couldn't make up their mind on what to call this console. The box calls it the Power Player, but the controller calls it the Super Joy 3. Whatever. The back of the box features stock images that are clearly not actual gameplay screenshots. And the front has an image that was ripped from Star Wars Episode 1, which was definitely not authorized. There's a sticker on the front that shows the amount of games, apparently 76,000. We'll see if that's true. The main controller is where the actual NES hardware is located, and it obviously resembles a Nintendo 64 controller. I'm not sure why they modeled it after that and not an actual NES controller, but it could be because that was the only way they could cram the hardware inside. The controller feels cheap, and the buttons do not feel good at all. The analog stick does not move, and I don't think it has any functionality. I don't know why it's on here, to be honest. The second player controller is a Genesis-style one. The D-pad on this is terrible, and the buttons feel cheap, but I think a Genesis controller works better on NES games than an N64 one. I wish I could use this instead of the other one. The Superjoy 3 uses composite cords, which means the gameplay is going to look very blurry on modern TVs, but this was the early 2000s, so I can't complain. The console comes with a battery pack, which supposedly takes AA batteries, but I was not able to fit them in. They popped out every time I tried. One of the batteries actually got warm and started to peel. I do not recommend using this. Thankfully, it does come with a power cord, so you don't even need the battery pack. Unfortunately, mine is badly damaged. Look at this. How did this happen? To be fair, this was probably the seller's fault, but I've never seen a power cord from Nintendo or Atari that looks like this. I ended up using a different power cord for this video. The first player controller has a cartridge port on the back, but the unit doesn't actually come with a cartridge. I tried playing my own Famicom games on this, but I got nothing more than glitchy artifacts. Plus, it's very difficult to fit cartridges in this, and I broke the plastic on one of my games. If you're looking for a unit to play your own Famicom games, this is not it, but you probably already knew that. Now that I've talked about the unit itself, let's turn it on and play some games. The header does say 76,000 games in one, but when moving all the way through the list, I do see a lot of repeats, so I can already tell that's not true. The game list is basic looking, there's no visuals or anything. It looks like a bootleg, which makes sense because it is. I'm surprised to see Contra on here, so let's try that first. The game looks fine, but I can tell right away that the D-pad on this controller is terrible. I'm having a lot of trouble aiming diagonally, and sometimes my character moves in directions I didn't press. Great game to have on this collection, but hard to play with this controller. Alright, let's try Calculator. That's kind of an interesting name. What could this be? Oh, it's Donkey Kong Jr. Math. Yeah, you're gonna have to get used to that. A lot of the games are incorrectly named, which is common on pirate multicarts and Famiclones like these. Let's try Monkey. Okay, it's Donkey Kong Jr. with minor changes to the graphics. For some reason, Donkey Kong Jr. is completely green and Mario is blue. 
You also start off on a later level. This is a common tactic for padding out the game list. By starting you off on level 2 or 3, the company that made this collection can pretend that's an extra game. What's funny is that when you beat the final level, your sprite reverts back to Donkey Kong Jr. Great job, guys. Now for Arabian. I think we all know what this is. Oh, that's not what I expected. This isn't Arabian at all. This is Urban Champion. What happened? Anyway, this is an early NES title where you have to get your opponent to the right side of the screen until he falls into the manhole. There's not much to it, but for early NES standards, this is an acceptable game. It's not acceptable, though, that it's listed under Arabian. Here's Speed Tank. I think I know what this is. Yup, it's Battle City by Namco. You commonly see this game on bootleg collections, which is nice because this was never released in the US. You play as a tank and you must defend your bunker below. You have to defeat all the opposing tanks to beat the stage. The one that flashes red will drop a power-up that will temporarily give you an ability. What's nice about this game is the construction mode where you can build your own stage. This is my favorite aspect of the game. Great game overall. Here's Mice Love Cat. No idea what this could be. Brush Roller? Why is this called Mice Love Cat? Anyway, this is one of Wan Shinwei's arcade imitations. It's a Pac-Man type game where you must paint the entire level and avoid the enemies. There's rollers on the stage that allow you to temporarily destroy the enemies. It's an okay game. What's weird is that if you play one of the other games that's called Mice Love Cat, it actually redirects you to Mappy. This makes more sense. Why does the other one bring you to Brush Roller? Anyway, in this game you play as a mouse who must collect all the objects. If you touch any of the cats, you automatically lose. When you're on the trampoline, you're completely immune to them, but you can only jump so many times before it breaks. This is an excellent arcade port, and it's a shame that this was not officially released in the US until much later. Here's Super Mario. Yeah, just Super Mario. The title screen looks a little unusual, but otherwise it's Super Mario Brothers. Now's a good time to talk about the sound. Listen to this. Here's what it's supposed to sound like. Unfortunately, all the games sound a little off, which is common with Famiclones. Also, when you defeat the boss, you hear a jumbled mess. I don't know what that's about. Look at this, there's two combats right next to each other. Which one should I pick? Let's try the first one. Alright, it's Field Combat. This is a common game that you see on bootlegs. You play as the Genesis 3, and you must make it to the top of the screen without getting hit. You can shoot down enemies, but you can also recruit them for your own team, and even summon them. It's actually a creative idea for a game. I wanted to reiterate again that the D-pad on this controller makes it extremely hard to play these games, especially this one because there's diagonal movement. Alright, now let's try the other combat. Okay, it's the same game. Why would they put them so close together on the list? Let's try Schoon. Wait, why are we on Brush Roller again? Why does this collection want you to play this game so badly? Alright, let's try a different Schoon. This looks more like it. I'm surprised they didn't edit out the copyright information below. Was that an oversight? You play as a submarine and you must save people who are trapped in underwater areas. If you collect 9 of them, you can bring them to the top and then receive a weapon upgrade. There's not much to say about it, but it is a decent game. There's a bunch of titles that have deceptive names. Oh cool, WWF? Let's try it out. Oh, it's just Muscle. Wow, Tekken is on here? I didn't know that was an NES game. Oh, it's Karateka. Oh cool, Toy Story? Didn't realize there was an NES version. Oh, it's Circus Charlie, but it starts you on stage 4. Just another example of padding out the game list. To summarize the game list, there's actually only 76 games total. They mainly put older Famicom titles on here because they don't take up a lot of ROM space, which means they can fit more games. There's a bunch of classic games on here like Super Mario Bros., Ice Climber, Pac-Man, and more. The Famicom lineup is the silver lining of this collection because none of these were released in the US. That's one good thing that I can say about bootlegs is that they give exposure to games that were released overseas. A good example is Twinbee. This is one of my favorite franchises by Konami, but if it weren't for bootlegs, I would have never have known about it. 
Overall, despite the majority of games on here being great, the Superjoy 3 is not worth picking up outside of novelty. The quality of this unit is very poor with the controller feeling cheap, the battery pack not accepting batteries, and the D-pad not working correctly. There's far less games than advertised, and most of them are deceptively named to trick you. There's far better ways to play Famicom and NES games today. Even though we knew that this bootleg console was poor quality, people still bought it. Most of the consumers who purchased this console had an NES in the past, which they probably either sold or got rid of because of the pin connectors wearing down. The Superjoy 3 was a nice alternative. At least that one worked for a few months out of the box. So the big elephant in the room here is that obviously these games were stolen, which is completely illegal. Their attempts at getting around the legal issues by changing the names of the games and removing the copyright information did not work. In 2004, Nintendo would take notice of the Superjoy 3 and take legal action against the importers and sellers. The FBI issued a search warrant against kiosks that were selling these units at the Mall of America. They also did a search on the storage unit that was being rented by Yonatan Cohen. As a result, the Superjoy 3 units were confiscated and Yonatan was arrested. Shortly after, the FBI arrested four more people in the New York City area who were involved in the making of the Superjoy 3. Yonatan pled guilty and served five years in federal prison. As an additional punishment, Yonatan was required to run ads in mall magazines advocating against piracy. Here's a picture of one of the ads. This must have been pretty embarrassing for him. I mean, look at this. His picture's in here, and it shows when his punishment will be. You would think this would have been the end of consoles like these, but surprisingly, no. You can easily go on Amazon and pick up present-day consoles just like these. Companies like Cool Baby still actively make bootleg consoles that feature tons of stolen games. Even companies like Ambernix sell units that come with ROMs. I went to the Great New York State Fair last summer, and there was a kiosk that was actually selling bootleg units. I'm honestly not sure how they're getting away with this, especially after what happened with the Superjoy 3. Let me know in the comments, what do you believe these companies are doing to stay out of trouble? Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.